Hello there everyone, and welcome back to the Russo-Turkish War Battle Series. It's been quite a while since I did one of these, not just for the Russo-Turkish War, but any battle series. So I thought I'd go ahead and explain to you how they work, or what the rules are. Most importantly to note is we're not trying to recreate the historical outcome, but we are, as best we can, try to recreate the conditions of the battle. That means troop numbers, troop variety. So if they said there were 12 cannons, we would try to put 12 cannons. If they said they had dismounted Cossacks, we're gonna use dismounted Cossacks to the best of our ability. In terms of maps, it's probably the hardest thing to actually find maps to directly correspond with the historical battlefields, so there there's a big like difference in between how the actual battle looked and what we're showing. We're trying as best as possible but of course there's very few custom maps, especially for something as odd as the Russo-Turkish War mod but just in for Empire um, in general, there's very few custom maps. So that's what we're trying to recre recreate. I'm just saying that we're not trying to recreate. But those are the variables that we're trying to uh, dial in as best as possible. And I think that explains it how the series works, so now we're going to move over into the historical context of the battle and then we're going to jump into the battle. I'll probably post a um, timestamp if you just want to jump straight into it. Obviously, as always, I'm going to do a little bit of a end screen where, is more, where it's more cinematic and so on. But with that, let's go ahead and jump into the historical context of the battle. And now for the historical context of the battle. In the first battle we showcased how the main Russian army that had moved in to Romania was crossing the Danube and they had the first battle of Switov right at the crossing there. Then for the second battle in the series we showcased the Stara Sarkora massacre as the Ottoman troops were moving to meet the Russians, there was a small detachment of Bulgarian troops and Russians holding up in the town of Stara Zerkova. There was a short fight, lasting about six hours. The uh, Ottomans took revenge on the town and basically entirely sacked it and burnt it to the ground. What we got today is the Russian army, of course, have crossed the Danube and they're now going to try and move to the south. What we have in the south is we've got a mountain range and a number of passes, so these choke points need to be captured and that is what we're going to do today. We're going to do the battle of... the first battle of Sipka Pass. So there's a total of four battles here. Um, so there's a detachment going, or a Russian detachment from the main army going ahead of the main army to secure the pass at Shipka. And that is what we're going to see today. And without further ado, let's jump into the battle, shall we? And now for the actual battle replay. So I'm actually doing this off my opponent's replay because I forgot to save mine. Hopefully we'll be able to showcase some of his hidden troops as this battle continues. So what we have is uh, to symbolize the uh, the Ottoman army at the pass, the Shipka Pass. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven and eight line infantry units. And then we've got four out here in the field. Now, I think they're... Oh, they're all up here right now. So four units of these Bashi Bazooks. And this is uh, roughly to symbolize the troops at the actual battle. As I recall, there were about 4,000 regular Ottoman soldiers holding the pass together with about 2,000 
buzzy bazooks. And uh, then we also have a battery entrenched over here. It's a howitzer battery ready to blast down upon the Russian army, which is going to advance from down here. The artillery, sh it should be mentioned that the artillery in this mod is super effective. Okay, so here's the Russian army. It's going to start off with a little bit of a uh, barrage here. The Ottoman is going to barrage my artillery. But they're not going to be able to destroy it. While I am mostly going to focus in on firing on their infantry. Which I think paid off quite well. Although my artillery is going to lose a lot of its crews. And it's going to lose some of its guns as well. For the Russian army, we've got five units of light infantry. Two units heading over here into an ambush. Two of which are going to head over here. One into the forest and one up on the hill. One's going to flank around into the pass over here. Then we've got the main line advancing, which is five units. I believe, yeah, five units of Bulgarian Legion. So we've got the Bulgarian troops marching first. One of these units is going to be extra brave and going to melee the Turks like there was no tomorrow. And then we have the regular Russian force. And then over on the flank here, we've got Dragoons. And we also got two units of Cossacks hiding out somewhere over here. They're not going to be shown just yet. We're going to go ahead and take a look at some of the devastating effect of the artillery as we can see it here. So I'm targeting his infantry while he's targeting my cannons. He's going to be able to destroy one of my parrot guns and he's also going to be able to kill about two-thirds of uh, my crew. But the thing is, they're so devastating that it's so much... I mean, it's... You get so much more out of it firing at the infantry, which I kind of learned in the first task battle we did. He's gonna switch to firing at my line infantry, or my light infantry, I should say. So he, he doesn't really get those hits on my line infantry, as he did in the first test battle. We can actually go ahead and take a look. Uh, you know what? We should... No, that's not... That hasn't happened just yet. So let's take a look at the defect here, what he's done. So his barrage killed one cannon and he killed two-thirds of the crew. However, he does not continue and he does not e completely end my battery to give him artillery superiority. Which I think I, either he should have just concentrated on my infantry or he should have concentrated and made sure to destroy my cannons. So here my light infantry is about to go into a trap. In the test battle, he actually had to all four up here. So I wasn't expecting the Basi Baruk to be this close. So they're able to get a really good volley off and totally surprise me here in my light infantry. That together when he's gonna concentrate his artillery around here is gonna mean that a lot of rifles are gonna die here. I'm also sending up the dismounted dragoons. What I didn't notice though, when I actually played the battle, was that it's only first rank of the dragoons that fire. But kind of lucky then that I only brought one of them. And these troops are um, symbolic of the troops that were in the detachment to move and secure the pass. I believe in total the detachment was 11,000. Now that was split into uh, different units and so on. But um, this is a uh, pretty good representation of what the Russians had. Now I have placed my rifles up here and they're actually being able to fire onto these. The thing is, I wasn't even trying to fire at these. I just put them here and I thought they were going to fire at this unit. So it was kind of a lucky coincidence that they ended up completely murdering the Ottoman artillery. And uh, I guess a... Uh, a um, 
neglect a neglected part on the uh, part of my um, enemy to actually cover this area but this actually plays out pretty much what the battle what a battle ended up being frontal assaults on the Ottoman position in the past failed and it wasn't until the Russians were able to take high ground on either side and then also bringing up troops on both the um, the northern side coming from kind of in terms of coming sort of Romania and then also from the southern side so they were coming at them from all distances all sides so it kind of makes sense that it happened that way uh, one thing that we missed here as I was focusing around this area was that I sent in those hidden Cossack cavalry that I had out here the um, we yeah we missed that uh, the Bazi Baruch what they do is they actually charge here they charge the dragoons but the dragoons I guess they have such a high so many points in melee that they were actually to withstand the attack and also started to wavering the Bazi Baruch as they were pulled back they um, the cavalry rode forward and shot them with that said the main attack is now coming underway so we've got the Bulgarian legions now making their attack they're gonna fire a few volley they're gonna fire a few volleys that was quite loud they're gonna fire quite a few volleys on the Ottoman position before trying to charge it melee style which is gonna fail miserably except for one unit over on the left kind of interesting here it seemed like all the Ottoman units focused in on just this one unit so I'm not entirely sure if he ordered them to just target this one or if he uh, if it just was that the um, auto targeting just happened like that because there's quite a few units that are actually gonna make it up to the uh, make it up to the line here so we got the Bulgarian Legion charging in swords drawn we see the commander there charging in and then the troops coming in after quickly though repulsed as uh, charging over such an open area with uh, multiple uh, you know very uh, highly accurate rifle fire coming at them here we've got another charge of the Bulgarian Legion. It's also soon going to be repulsed. But if we look over here, this Bulgarian Legion has actually managed to get a foothold on the left side. Oh, there goes the enemy commander. He got hit by artillery. So they're actually going to get a foothold and this unit's actually going to survive to the end of the battle. They're going to win this fight and then they're going to set up to flank fire down the line. The Russian regular troops are now moving up to fire. At the same time here in the forest, we've got the uh, rifles and I believe the dragoons are moving up as well. Now the Cossack cavalry is moving in to try and charge this area and they're gonna help out so he realizes that one Bulgarian legion actually got in so he's trying to move over the Basibaruk to shoot them down the thing though is he moves out into the open I believe he's getting hit by Russian lead uh, Russian troops and the rifles which are tearing these guys apart plus the cavalry I'm gonna soon send in the cavalry to try and sweep these guys away so with all this artillery fire and with the second line, the Russian troops now firing, we can see that the Ottoman line is wavering. We've got troops retreating. We've got, you know, units of 10 men here and there. My rifles have moved up, so we've got a small rifle unit coming in there. Another one over there, so we're flanking them. Now the main Russian troops are going in for their bayonet attack. At the same time, I'm sending in the cavalry, so the cavalry is going to sweep in against the Basiburuk. Caught out of formation, or really not holding formation, firing towards the cavalry is going to be disastrous for them, and they're going to be rode down. At the same time, we've got the bayonet charge going in. We've got the Bulgarian Legion unit, they're still there. 
He's sending in the Basi Baruk to try and attack here and reclaim the line. But unfortunately for him, the Cossacks are hot on their heel. And we've got a unit of Cossacks riding them down. And they break just as they contact with the Bulgarian Legion. They were able to stab quite a few of them, I think about 20 of the Bulgarian Legion. But they were saved by the Cossack cavalry. Which got them and now they're going to turn on the unit up there. At the same time we've got the melee continuing over here. Where tons of Russian troops are now in gale in engaging in melee combat with the Ottoman. They're retreating over here. Meaning the last units to hold is over here. We've got one unit of about 18 men. I believe there are also possibly something out in the woods as well. You can see the artillery striking. And the uh, Battle of the Pass at this point is definitely won. Historically what happened was that they kind of came to a stalemate. But the Ottomans realized that being more or less surrounded on all sides they needed to get out of there. So under the pretense of trying to discuss the terms of surrender they kind of slipped away um, in small groups out of the pass. So there's very few Ottomans here holding up a brave defense against so many Russian troops that are coming on here. At the same time the rifles have captured the howitzers and I believe that's it. Victory was achieved, the Ottomans are running, and here we've got the battle. So it says Lord John on both here, but that's because it's kind of weird when you're looking at someone else's replay. So um, this is the Ottoman force, they deployed about 4,000 men. So if you remember what I said about the Ottoman force, they had 4,000 regu regulars and 2,000 uh, Basi Bazook. So we couldn't get the exact numbers. But we got as close as possible and here's the Russian forces. Losses are quite equal if you see that um, due to part because I, I'd really just like to see melee charges. I probably could have worked it in a better way but at the same time with the scenario in mind flanking maneuvers were limited so I needed to do these kind of frontal assaults and I thought it looked cool in the end screen if we did a big charge of the Bulgarians. Um, so that's why a lot of them were killed. Also note the disparity here in between the units killed. So my... Um, the Ottomans killed 2,500 but I lost 3,000. That means 500 were team killed. On the other side the uh, I was able to kill 2,400 while the enemy... I'm not entirely sure how that works. Because I don't think the Ottomans actually killed that many of their own. So I'm not entirely sure how they managed to lose almost a thousand in, in difference here. That apparently I did not kill. But I think that's the way the artillery works in the mod. That um, not all of the kills that it actually does is accounted for the artillery. And when we look at the statistics that kind of shows as well. So what we're looking at here is the Ottoman troops. Um, now the Ottoman howitzers did not fire that much on my infantry. So that's a key part to why that did not kill as many. It only killed about 127 which is quite poor if you compared to what happened when I fired on the, uh, on the Ottoman troops behind here. Highest killer goes to one of the line infantry. They obviously got quite kind of a field day shooting at the Bulgarians advancing. So a lot of high kills, almost 600 here for two units. Then it goes down to 300 and so on. Uh, we can see the Bazi Bazooks did, did very poorly. I think they did better in the first battle because... I don't know why actually, but I think, well they held on better and I kind of messed up my cavalry flank. We also have one Ottoman unit here, one line infantry, which got 
annihilated almost. A single man survived. And they only managed to inflict 13 casualties. So not very good. I did screenshot my own results. So I'm gonna show them. Um, I'm not gonna be able to talk about them that much, but as I recall, it was a lot of kills for my artillery in comparison, in comparison to the Ottomans. So I'm gonna show that. Um, and then we'll probably see a similar result of the Bazibuzuks, but for my um, for my Bulgarian Legion, except for the one that actually made it there. But I think, with that said, I hope you guys enjoyed this one, and hopefully this is something you like, and uh, I'll do more of it. So yeah, with that said, I say as I always say, hopefully you guys enjoyed this, and hopefully I'll see you guys for the next one. Bye! Thank you.